Hello everybody, my name is Leo and welcome to a very quick and a little bit more casual tutorial from Blau Films. Tonight we're going to be looking at how to add some realistic stars to the background of your scene. This is going to be a uh, simple compositing tutorial and we will be using Cinema 4D and whatever render engine you have as long as you have camera settings so that we're consistent with the brightness of the stars throughout your film. I would like to thank Teresa Almeida for allowing me to use some footage from her film Peter Walter. I worked on this film as a visual effects artist and this shot was one of the examples in which I added some stars in the background and I would like to quickly go through that process. The original shot as you can see over here was a daytime shot. This shot is an establishing shot for another sequence that happens to play at night. So, you know, I had to go in there and turn this into a night scene. Over the years, I've seen many people do different day for night techniques, but I like to do this one, which I kind of learned in Photoshop. So I use a photo filter with the maximum density of 100%. I don't check preserve luminosity because that would just give it a little bit of a hue tint. And then as a color, I'm going for a very dark, slightly grayish blue tone. And then what we get already looks quite nice, but at night you tend to lose some saturation as well. So I added a vibrance effect and I put that down to about negative 40. I've created a copy of the original layer, which is using a photo filter as well, but now a much brighter blue that's also pushed a bit more towards the green. I also have a vibrance on there, but this one is just set to about negative 10. I'm putting that to soft light, so let me toggle between. What we're doing here is we're reintroducing a little bit of that color, but we're also darkening down most of the shadowy areas. Throughout the entire film, I get this dreamy feel. So I decided to duplicate the layer again. I made a relatively rough mask around the building. I set that mask to add and I added a feather of about 250 photo filter and I add an exposure control but let me first show you what it actually does. If I toggle that on and off you'll see that I reintroduced a bit more of the details back into the mid-tones and highlight areas from the building but I also gave the night sky a bit more of a boost, almost as if the sun still hasn't completely gone down and is still reflecting into the atmosphere. Then to make sure this shot matches the next sequence, which is set inside, I decided to create this extra layer, which is a copy from the original with a glow effect. Do make sure that there is not too much of a feathered glow. I just masked out some of these windows and here you go. Now this to me looks almost correct. There is something that still doesn't feel completely right, which is the intensity and exposure of the light over here. If we're still seeing so much of the night building and also so much of the night sky, our exposure on these windows would have to be brighter. So for that, I created a duplicate layer of that and there you go. I finished off by using another duplicate of that layer, but this time I've changed the mask shape to be the areas where the light would hit, and I gave it a bit of a glow. The final thing I did, which is what we will be using to add our stars in, is this layer 4 over here. It's a pre-composed version of another duplicate of the bottom layer, and inside a luma mat that is excluding the building but is also excluding these clouds over here. Now the clouds are constantly moving and there are some birds on the edge of the building. So creating this with a luma mat, make sure you have a very accurate one-to-one -one mat for your stars. They will never peek through the clouds and they will only show up in this bright white area. The way I did that is with two simple effects. First add a tint effect, make it black and white and then add an exposure effect in which I crunch down the gamma and I boost the exposure so we have a very controlled area that we're selecting. I'll reset this and I'll show you what will happen. So we lower the gamma and we boost the exposure. Now this seems to be about bright enough. 
and then now we just make sure that this goes down and there we go now there are some bright spots at the bottom but as long as we don't include any stars underneath the horizon there is nothing to worry about so now it's time for the stars now because we're working on our sci-fi film syntactic labyrinths i needed a shitload of star backplates so what i did recently is i went into photoshop and i extracted every single star from a NASA image. Now you can go through the same process as I did or you can come to my art station store and then here you go. For uh, right now I guess it's because it's a uh, art station sale for four dollars and seventy nine cents you can get these organic stars and I've been using them in uh, a bunch of different things. Let's import whatever star map you have I'm going to import nine of them, throw them in, and I'm going to put them right underneath our mat. I'm going to make it 3D and push it back in Z-Space, and I'm going to put the mode to add. First, I'm going to compose the stars until I have enough of them. Now, what I will do is I will select these three layers, and I will pre-compose them throw them into a new layer. Now I'm going to put this to add. I'm going to select Luma Matte. And there you go. Now these stars are only showing up on the areas that we have allowed them to. A few more changes. First, we name this the stars. Open it up. When we're looking at stars from our point of view on Earth, there is a lot of stuff in between the stars and our eyes that is passing our view. So we have tiny, tiny water particles in the air. We have dust. We have, um, you know, like a bird passing, uh, UFOs. There's so many things that are passing the stars that they are giving us a little bit of a twinkle. The way that I've found to create a pretty organic twinkle is I'm going to create a new solid make composition size and then I'm gonna go in to noise and grain fractal noise and when it comes to fractal type I like to choose cloudy boost the contrast a bit and lower the brightness to about there just so we have these nice pockets of medium grays and some pockets of full blackness now I'm gonna Go, I'm going to go into the transform. I'm going to select the offset turbulence. I'm going to go until the end of our timeline. I'm going to select the x axis, and uh, well, we're using a 1920 composition, so let's say negative 600. So now we've moved just over a quarter of our composition. So the next thing I will do is I will come to evolution. Alt click time times 50. You don't want this to be too fast. 50 is fine. Let me solo that and I'll show you what it does. Every time you see a black pocket, that's when the star is going to disappear. And everywhere where it's white, that's when the star is going to stay. Quite simple. So, what we will do is we will take this bottom layer and we will luma mat it with the layer up top and I will add a little bit of an exposure control so that we can better see what it is that we're doing and there you go a very subtle but if I say so myself pretty realistic twinkle so we're going to duplicate this layer two more times, add it up top of each one of our stars, and we're going to luma mat each of these stars. Add these stars back in, and great. Now I'm going to create a new layer, adjustment layer, and I'm going to add a camera lens blur. Ooh. Now the camera lens blur, I'm putting that to add. And I'm lowering the blur radius to about 2. 
then I'm going to come in to my opacity of my adjustment layer. I'm going to adjust accordingly. Yes, 30 seems to be doing just the trick. Oh, that's very satisfying. That actually is very satisfying to look at. I'd like to do an exposure check on my stars to make sure that they feel as accurately as possible. So in Cinema 4D, I'm gonna go in and create a plane. Each of my star maps is 3840 by 2160 pixels. I'm gonna add that in as centimeters. Come in, add a camera, Corona, Corona camera tag. I'm gonna use photographic exposure Make sure that I'm looking at my plane. Also make sure that you're inside of the renderer you're supposed to be using. I'm going to create a new light material. And I'm going to add really any one of these planes. Keep the light intensity at 1. That just seems to be the value that works for me. And our current camera settings, the standard camera settings, are a shutter speed of 1 over 30. Um, an f-stop of 16 and the first thing we know is that we have a 24 frame per second footage over here and knowing Eric Alcaraz I think he might have put it to 60 on his camera. So as we can see here with a ISO of 200, a shutter of 1 over 60 and an f-stop of 16, stars should basically not be visible. I don't actually have any of the information from the camera, plus we turned this into a day for night shot, so that already changes a lot of things. But one thing that doesn't change is the f-stop, because we can clearly see that this shot is not a shallow depth of field shot. That to me tells me it's going to be an f-stop of 6.3 upwards. And an act of good faith, I'm going to go with 6.3. So, re-render. Ah, there you go. So, assuming we are shooting a night shot with an f-stop of 6.3 and the shutter of 1 over 60, this would kind of have to be the brightness of our stars. What I will do is I will just make a screenshot, come into here in After Effects, And I'll put it right on top. Our stars are still a little bit too bright. Our brightest points are, I would say, twice as bright as the ones over here. But we're also shooting a night scene. So it could be that our ISO is not 200. Let's say we boost their ISO to about 800. And we re-render. To me, this feels a little bit more natural to what you would see from shooting a night shot. I'm going to import this screenshot as well. Okay, so what I will do now to make sure that this looks like this is I will make a final exposure adjustment in After Effects. Right up top here on the right side corner you can see this RGBA value info box and if I hover my mouse over anything black it stays zero and if I go over something that's white you can see that it tells me what the value is. Now I'll have to zoom in a little bit if I want to actually land on something because these stars are tiny. Now this one or this one on the left seems to be quite bright. I'm getting a value of about 27,000. 27, yeah 27,000. And now if I go to the stars over here and I do a check I get about 15,000. I saw 15 there. 15,000, yep. So, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to lower the exposure of these things for about half. I'm gonna do that by creating a new adjustment layer which I'm putting underneath of our blur. I'm gonna go in with my curves adjustment. I'm gonna take the top and move it to the middle. There you go. Now let's do a check.
13,000? Yeah, 13,000. All right, we're going to let it go a little bit back up. 15,000. That's perfect. Now we can get rid of these screenshots. We go back to our original shot. And there we go. There we go. That does not look half bad. The one thing that I'm not entirely sure about are these uh, stars that are peeking through these clouds at the bottom. To fix that, I'm just going to make a quick mask around this area. Subtract, feather it out for about uh, 80 pixels. That looks all right. Now, finally, what I did is I created this null object over here that includes a bunch of tiny tracking data. I uh, went into animation track in Boris FX Mocha, track small motion. It's really just tracking the small jitter, the unnoticeable jitter that's coming from the camera. And I'm going to parent the stars to this null object. And that's it. A realistic star replacement using Cinema 4D as a guide to make sure that our exposure always stays natural. We went through it quite quickly. Now that you have that skill under your belt, go apply stars to everything you can and uh, go do some day for nights as well. Now, before I finish this video, I would like to talk to you guys about something. We're reaching about 200 subscribers. Thank you very much. The few of you who are here are very special to me. There are many more videos coming up. Uh, me, Eric, and Gabby, we will all be releasing some stuff on here. Right now, you can always find us on Instagram. And me personally, I'm more on ArtStation, I would say. Our latest short film is getting closer to being done and when that's done we will be releasing a whole bunch of tutorials that will go very in depth as to our creative process and our, a lot of technical decisions that we had to go through. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, like this video if you enjoyed it, share it, and uh, cheers, talk to you soon, bye bye.